All right, welcome back. Today we're doing the muscle contraction cycle part two. In the last video, we went over the part one. And just a little brief overview, we went over that there's a neuron that secretes acetylcholine, which binds to acetylcholine receptors on a muscle cell. This causes a sodium influx, which generates an axe potential. And this causes DHP receptors to basically pull on something called renidine receptors located on the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is like the endoplasmic reticulum, but for a muscle cell. When this happens, calcium is released from the SR. I'll just uh, shorten it into a sar instead of sarcoplasmic reticulum. So calcium is released. So this right here is the step right after it. So calcium is released from the sarcoplasm reticulum. And it's going to the sarcoplasm, or like the cytoplasm is called sarcoplasm because it's the muscle cell. So the calcium concentration is high. Calcium binds to something called troponin. Now, I have a key here. So we have four things we need to go over. We have actin, we have myosin, we have tropomyosin, and we have troponin. So this figure I drawn here, draw it here. Now, just a little heads up. It took me about four hours to draw all these pictures. So if you like these pictures, please, you know, if if you like what I'm doing, please like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. But anyways, so what we're looking at here is a sarcomere, essentially. What we have here is actin and myosin. Ball looking things is actin, and this bottom piece here, that's the wrong tool I should be using. This right here is the myosin, and this is actin. Okay? So actin is a thin filament, and myosin is a thick filament. We have something called tropomyosin. Tropomyosin is a protein that's located on actin. Now, this is a little brief overview of how, what's going to happen here. So for a contraction to happen, there's something called myosin heads, which is this piece right here, that's attached to myosin. So myosin, the actual thick filament, has little heads that come off of it. And these heads have the ability to bind to actin. And what happens is when it binds to actin, it can pull really hard, which causes a contraction. But there are these proteins that block that from happening. And that's called tropomyosin. Tropomyosin is located on actin. And what it does is there's certain spots on actin. It's these little pale looking spots. These are binding sites for myosin heads. The myosin head just cannot bind anywhere on actin. There's very specific binding positions. And tropomyosin covers them up. Right? So if you don't want to be contracting your muscle, we want tropomyosin to cover it up. We don't want to always be contracting our muscles. So tropomyosin prevents that from happening. It's like a protein that blocks the binding site. Troponin is another protein that's located on actin. And what this does is when it's stimulated with calcium, it pushes tropomyosin away. So it exposes the binding sites so myosin can bind. So let's go over the figure. So we already went over actin, which is the little circular things. The myosin head is this piece, and it's the actual myosin thick filament. We have calcium, and this is troponin. All right, so let's start with step one. Step one, calcium binds to troponin. So you have an influx of calcium because the sarcoplasmic reticulum has released calcium. And the calcium is binding to troponin. You have our little troponin molecule, our protein, and calcium basically just sticks on there. That's literally the first step. That easy. Second step. Now what's going to happen is troponin is going to push tropomyosin out of the way and exposes the binding sites for myosin heads. So now, do you see this blue tropomyosin strand here, this protein? It's out of the way. Now it's exposing the binding sites, these pale-looking spots. The binding sites, they're all exposed. 
So what this troponin did is basically say, hey, strobomycin, get out of the way. Move out of the way. That's it. And this only happens when troponin has been exposed to calcium. Had troponin not been exposed to calcium, tropomyosin would just be backward coming, covering the binding spots. That's step two. Step three is the myosin heads form something called a cross bridge. That's the official name with actin. So these myosin heads, since the binding site's now exposed, the myosin head is attracted to the binding site. So basically what's happening is the binding site and actin says, you know, is talking to the myosin, hey, come over, come over and bind. I'm happy. I'll be really happy for you to come and bind with me. That's already what's happening. Since tropomyosin's out of the way, the myosin head can come along and bind to the binding site on actin. Okay? And the calcium is still on the troponin because you don't want tropomyosin to cover it up. Okay? Step four. Myosin heads pull actin. So with all their force, they're going to be pulling. And this right here is what causes the contraction. This myosin head is really charged, right? It has a lot of energy. It's able to pull. And this myosin head, it's pulling and this, the pulling, um, what should I say? The pulling action on the actin is what causes your muscles to actually contract. This right here is the actual contraction. So when you flex your biceps your, or triceps, any muscles in your legs or your back, this is what's happening. This is how you're able to do it. So the myosin heads pull on actin. Step five, this is the last part. So now when we're done with the contraction, what's gonna happen is ATP is now going to be on basically binded to the myosin head. It's going to be charged with ATP. And it's, this causes it to be released from the binding site. So notice in step four and all the other steps, we had ADP plus P. No, no ATP. As soon as ATP binds, sorry, there's a lot of drawings. So it's like the white stuff. Yeah, sorry. My iPad cannot handle this. Graphics. So once ATP is, well actually ra rather, when the pulling animation is done, ATP comes along and binds, and it causes it to release from the active site, the, bi the binding site. It causes it to release. And when it releases, what will happen is it will go back to ADP plus P once it's done releasing, and it's going to go back into the relaxed state or the back to rest. So all the way back, sorry, all the way back to here. Basically, we've reset. So after ATP is done binding, rather, after ATP has done its job and moved the myosin heads away from the binding site, it's going to... ATP is going to basically be broken off and be, be turned to ADP plus P. Now, you're probably wondering why ATP? What's the purpose? Sorry. As you can see, five hours of drawing causes this. <laughs> so, originally, remember, the myosin heads were bound to here. So they want to stay here. They don't want to be let go. They're happy, so they're they're happy in this position. They're happy in this position. They don't want to let go. Why would they want to let go? But we need to let go, so we can go back to rest, essentially. And the only way they'll ever let go is if ATP comes along and binds, and that causes the release. And once it's released, we're back to step one. We're back to rest, basically. And yes, back to step one. And that right there is the entire muscle contraction cycle. So with part one and part two, this would conclude basically how skeletal muscles contract and how your, yes, how your muscles contract. If you found this useful, please like and subscribe. And until later, see ya.